maybe before the, the Volterra predator prey models, I should uh, ask and answer a question. Why do negative eigen values give asim stability? Um, whereas positive eigen values give instability. Because I mean, this is something I just, I just said when we were talking about, um, linear homogeneous differential equations with constant coefficients, but I, I never gave any kind of argument. And I mean, the answer comes directly from the solution. So if you think of what the solutions look like, I mean, say we have, say we're looking at x prime equals ax, and we have, and a is two by two, and we have two negative eigenvalues, say, negative three and four. Then our solution is going to be an eigenvector times e, to the first eigenvalue and an eigenvector times e to the second eigenvalue. And what happens as time passes? Well, as time passes, e goes to infinity. And uh, remember that having a negative sign e to the negative 3t. That's the same as having this in the denominator of a fraction. So as time goes to infinity, the exponential goes to infinity, and the fraction goes to zero. So as time goes to infinity, this goes to zero, and this goes to zero. So x is approaching the origin. x is approaching zero comma zero. So zero comma zero is asymptotically stable. As time passes, everything approaches it. Let's say, that one of the eigenvalues is positive. Well, now as t goes to infinity, this Now, as t goes to infinity, this part of the equation is still going to zero. But e to the 4t is going to infinity. So this part of the equation is blowing up. So as time passes, x is no longer going to zero, the origin. x is going away from the origin because this second part of the equation is blowing up to infinity. So since x is going away from the origin, the origin must be unstable. And I mean, this kind of argument 
works for all of the possibilities. Like, say we're still in the two by two case, we just have one eigenvalue and it's defective. So our solution is going to look like E to the defective eigenvalue plus, and then we'll have some linear expression involving generalized eigenvectors. But I mean, still, because the eigenvalue is negative as time passes, this goes to zero and this goes to zero. So the whole thing goes to zero. Um, why, when, when you have complex eigenvalues, why is it just the real part that's controlling stuff? Why does the real part being negative if you asymptotic stability and being um, positive if you instability um, and being zero if you neutrality? Well, because if you have a complex eigenvalue, again, let's say we're in the two by two case, we're going to have E to the real part out front. And then it's going to be multiplied by some sines and cosines in those parentheses. And the sines and cosines can't go to infinity. The sines and the cosines are both stuck between negative one and one. So if the real part is negative, so if we have a negative five here, let's say, then we've got something that's going to zero times something that's stuck between negative one and one. And this whole product then is going to zero. So the real part being negative means this whole thing is going to zero. If the real part is positive, well, now this is going to infinity. But the sine and the cosine are bouncing around. The sine and the cosine, you've got this sum inside the parentheses. It's stuck between, I mean, I guess formally the sines and plus the cosine would be stuck between negative two and positive two. And that bouncing around, gives us something that looks like this. And then in the two-dimensional plane, that turns into a spiral. The only neutral case is if we have um, purely imaginary eigenvalues. And again, you can sort of see what's happening here. If you have purely imaginary eigenvalues, then e to the real part 
is e to the zero and e to the zero is constant. E to the zero is one. And now the sine and the cosine are both periodic. As time passes, the sine and the cosine start to repeat themselves. And in the plane, if we start to repeat ourselves, it means that whatever else we're doing as time passes, we eventually wind up back where we started, and then we just retrace that path over and over. So if the fixed point is there, we must be orbiting the fixed point and tracing out these, these neutrally stable paths. So I just wanted to address that because I mean, really, you know, sometimes you might want to solve these linear things, but, um, but in, in real life, I mean, in, genera in general, um, systems of differential equations aren't linear. So, I mean, actually solving those linear systems is a pretty specialized skill. What we're actually interested in is questions of stability. So it's sort of, we went to all of the trouble of learning to solve them. We should realize that this stability stuff isn't just coming out of nowhere. It's a direct result of what these solutions look like. So I wanted to say that just because I don't think I really properly expressed that idea last week. 